Lord, Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So glad you chose to worship with us tonight here in the worship center. And also those of you that are on Facebook and YouTube, we're so grateful that you're here. Let's go ahead and stand and let's invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. We want his presence here. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome in the worship. You're welcome in the word. You're welcome in our giving. You're welcome in everything we do and say, Holy Spirit, come in power, in might, and do what you do best. Lead us to Jesus. Magnify, lift up the one we've come to exalt tonight in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen and amen. Come on, let's worship. Oh, yes, 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 yes. One, two, one, two, three. Mm -mm -mm. All of these songs we keep singing, all of this praise we keep bringing, when it's all said and done, we just want you to come, oh yes, and these hands we keep raising, these prayers we keep praying, when it's all said and done, oh come on. Just want you to come, come. Oh, come on, church. Let them hear you. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let your glory fall. Let it fall. Oh, yes. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let your glory fall. We don't need light camera action. We are just longing for your presence when it's all said and done. Come on. We just want you to come. Oh, yes. We won't move. Lord, will you show your glory? Oh, yes. We're waiting here for you. Come on. Let it fall. Let it fall, let it fall, let your glory fall, let it fall, oh yes, let it fall, let it fall, let your glory fall, oh, oh, oh yes, hallelujah, santo, santo, hallelujah. Oh, right now, Lord, right now, right now, Lord. Move how you want to move. Do what you want to do. We're moving out the way. And all we want is you. Move how you want to move. Do what you want to do. We're moving out the way. And all we want is you. Move how you want to move. Do what you want to do. We're moving out the way. And all we want is you, all we want is you, all we want is you, we're moving out the way, and all we want is you, all we want is you, all we want is you, yes Lord, all we want out the way, 
Michelle's favorite singer is Tasha Cobb right there. Yeah. Look her up. You'll love her. All right. Wave at somebody. Tell them you're glad they're in church tonight. Amen. Amen. Wave back there at Jim. He just had surgery and he's uh, doing great. His knee is a little swollen, but he's going to be healed because he's going to take Holy Communion tonight. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. And watch right here for the uh, announcements this week. Welcome to Riverside Church. Let's take a look at this week's announcements. Pastor Sue will begin teaching a new Bible study on the armor of God on Wednesday, July 15th at 7 p.m. We hope you'll join us. Jeremy is leaving! Okay, come on. Let's get you to college. Jeremy. No way. It's a gift from all of us. Not bad at all. Mr. Cam, hmm. you want to come back to Earth? <laughs> Hi. Hi. If you're free, I'll be at the beach. It's a date. What? You literally just asked me out. We'll see. Thank you. Hey, man, I was wondering if I could ask you some questions about how to make it. That's not about making it. It's about what our songs give people. What do you want to give people? Just a blank tape. We can turn that into your demo. You got this. God has chosen something bigger for you. I have something to tell you. You're going to be healed. Can we do something for the most special person in my life tonight? Can we pray for her? A day with no more pain, your music pulls that closer. I'm proud of you. We have an artist with five number one hit singles. He has a story to tell. If just one person's life's changed, then it's worth it. I Still Believe, showing in the Youth Center on Sunday, July 26th at 6 p.m. Free admission, free popcorn, and free water bottle. We hope you'll join us. Thanks for coming. We're so glad you're here. Yes, we are glad that you're here, and we are glad that Moses is better and well and here. <laughs> Hallelujah. And his wife is better. Your wife is okay, yep, too. Yep, yep, yes, yep. they've both been going with this virus. We have so many people that have uh, contracted this thing. Some very serious. Some with, of course, um, pre-existing conditions that have caused them some issues. Uh, we're going to pray for them later on. Pastor Tom has been diagnosed with it, and so we're going to pray for him as well. Pastor Ron Barber, but it's not good for him because of the lung issue. So we're just going to curse this thing tonight. We're going to take our healing. Is that okay with everybody? Amen, amen. When we come to the table with our communion, we're going to take our healing tonight. So uh, lots of good things coming up. I encourage you, if you cannot be here Wednesday night, watch the YouTube, the Facebook um, posts that are there. Um, Pastor Sue's teaching from this last Wednesday is already there. All you have to do is look for that little slide with... Um, the uh, armor of God man on there, the, the legionnaire. And uh, she had 522 views from that thing already. 
That's through views. That means they watch the whole thing. That is good, and it is good teaching. So she's taking what I've taught and just kind of made it even deeper as the Holy Spirit's given it to her. So I encourage you to be a part of that, even if you have to watch it um, on, on the recording, all right? All right, all kinds of other good things happening. Check it out. Uh, ask questions. Check the Facebook page. Check the app. Uh, who's a happy, hilarious giver tonight? Amen? Amen. We are seeing people saved. We are seeing lives touched. You know, when you think about we're going through this thing with the COVID and all this, you forget that they're going through this thing all over the world. And uh, we have several of our missionaries who were supposed to come home and, and were supposed to have their, their itineration or their furlough. They're not able to do that because, of course, the travel. And so we've been praying for them. We're going to update you as we get uh, more information. Uh, Kyle and Becky Alford from Sri Lanka just happened to be here. They won't be able to go back until their country opens. And so uh, he was sharing with me on the Facebook how what God is doing in Sri Lanka and lives are being changed. So remember that when you give your missions dollars. It's not just affecting us here. It's affecting our missionaries all over the world. And so we're so grateful for your support. Five ways to give. The easiest way is the church app. There's two stations at the front, two stations at the back. If you need to, if you don't want to walk all the way front, you just drop it there. This is just our way of, of doing touch-free giving. Amen. So let's stand and we'll pray over the offering and then uh, we'll remain standing for worship tonight. Amen. Pastor Matt, come pray over the offering.
every day is the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Come on. And I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Come on. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears. Like holy water, your forgiveness. Come on. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, te damos gracias. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Hear our cry, hear our cry, hear our cry. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We lift your name here tonight. And those that are watching on life, Lord, hallelujah, hear our cry, hear our cry here tonight. Oh, yes, 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 hallelujah. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Yes, 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 yes. And the evidence is all around. Oh, yes. And that the Spirit of the Lord is here. That the atmosphere, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here, oh yes. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here, come on. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts. The spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is changing now. For the spirit of the Lord is here. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. The evidence is all around. of the Lord is he overflow overflow in this place and fill our hearts with your love your love surrounds us you're the reason we came to encounter your love your love 
overflow, overflow in this place and fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason, you're the reason, you're the reason. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Spirit of God, hallelujah. Oh, yes, hallelujah. We need you, we need you, we need your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Here we go. Spirit of God, oh, fresh on us. We need your presence. us now. A miracle can happen now. Mm. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Yes, yes, yes. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord Hallelujah, hallelujah, he's here. He's here, he's here, hallelujah. There's some folks in our church that desperately need a miracle. There's some people in this room that need a miracle. Holy Spirit is here. He came in the minute we came in because he comes with us. Jesus said he wouldn't just be with us, but he'd be in us. And there's power when we come together collectively. And so right now, whether you're here or watching online, Facebook, YouTube, Right now, if you need a miracle, you cry out. You say, God, I need a miracle. I need your Holy Spirit to touch. And whatever it is, call it out right now. Declare it by faith. You say, I don't know about that. Don't worry about it. It's in the Word. Declare it by faith right now. You need healing? 
right now claim the stripes that Jesus took upon his back. We speak healing over all those in our congregation that are struggling with this virus. We think of Deanna uh, uh, in first service, her parents who are literally fighting for their life, Lord. We speak healing in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak healing over Deanne's parents right now, Lord God. Touch their breathing. May their lungs just be filled with the glory of God. And may their, their, their lives just be changed as the Spirit of God touches them in the hospital, in the ICU. May they no longer have to be on the ventilator and on the other things, Lord God. And give her peace, Lord God, because she's frustrated. She's struggling, Lord God, not being able to be there with them. Father, we think of Pastor Ron, Lord. Uh, as he has this virus, Lord, and he has all those si uh, symptoms and situations because of pre-existing, Lord, with his lungs. We speak healing over Pastor Ron's body right now in the name of Jesus. We speak life over he and uh, his daughter Lori's body. And I pray that Karen wouldn't get it, Lord God. I pray that you'd shield her with your presence. We pray for Pastor Tom that you would heal him too and keep Nancy from getting this thing, Lord God. And Father God, just restore his health and vitality right now. We stand in faith and believe for Orlando who's watching and actually controlling half the equipment back there tonight from home. We speak healing over his body from this virus. Keep his dad and his brother Freddie from getting this virus in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So many others, Sandy and Mason, who are feeling well, not knowing if they have the virus. Nikki's granddaughter, our cleaning staff, Lord God, Kylie, Lord God. We speak healing. We speak healing. So many others, Lord God. We just speak healing by faith, Lord. You know every name of every person that belongs to this church, Lord God, that is being impacted by this. Lord, we just cry out to you, healing by the name of Jesus, healing by the stripes he took upon his back. When we take Holy Communion tonight, I pray they would take Holy Communion tonight and receive by faith their healing. Standing in firm faith that you are a God that loves us, cares about us, and provides all that we need. For those that are struggling financially, Lord, may they cry out for that miracle of finances. Lord, you see them for relationship issues, for all kinds of situations, some with just anxiety and fear. Lord, we come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Do your work in your church. Bring healing to Jim's body. I pray that when he takes Holy Communion tonight, he, he senses and knows the power of God in his knee. Lord, we pray that for Craig, too, with uh, the complications from the surgery that he had. And for Julio's eye, for the uh, attaching of the retina, Lord, continue to heal his body, Lord God. Keep him healthy, Lord God. So many others in our congregation who need your touch. Lord, pour out your spirit right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we cry out for our nation. Our nation desperately needs a touch from heaven. I pray, Lord, that you give our leaders wisdom, knowledge, revelation. Lord, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle they sit. It doesn't matter who they represent. It doesn't matter where they serve. They just need to be born again so they govern according to your will and to your plan and to your purpose so that we can live in peace. We think of the, the great civil rights leader, John Lewis, his family, as he went home to be with the Lord. Father, we just pray for the Lewis family right now. We just pray that you would be the God of all comfort, fighting a good fight, 80 years young, always on the front line, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would use his life to speak to many so that we can have peace in our nation, Lord God. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord. May your people see Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And when they see Jesus, may true peace come. And all across the community tomorrow, Lord, may the body of Christ be blessed with your presence as they worship, no matter where or how or what the label across the door is. May they just open the word and, and be changed by the truth of the gospel. May the Holy Spirit move and may Jesus be exalted in every house of worship in this community, no matter how they worship, Lord, whether in person or online, whether on Zoom or Facebook or YouTube or Roku or whatever their platform, Lord, just pour out your spirit in great power and authority and kiss them with your presence because that's what we want you to do here. Open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. And Lord, we'll be quick to give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen and amen. Come on, say amen like you mean it.
Say it a little bit louder. Thank you. Now give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Good music tonight. Man, we'll, we'll let him stay home for a couple weeks all the time. How about that? Nah. Nah. Oh, this thing's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Next week, I wanted to start a series called Pause. And um, a lot of it's going to be very personal. Um, the enemy, the enemy is at work. Did y'all know that? Did you know that the enemy is alive and well and, and working hard to bring division, not only in our nation, in our world, but even in the church? And um, I think we need to pause. We need to take a pause and we need to recognize some things and see some things so that we can love one another. Now, I, I wanna, I'm going to get into tall weeds for a minute because we just have to. You know, that's me. I told you last week I needed a soapbox. I should have bought one in Blue Ridge. Michelle will help me buy one when I'm there the next time at the Mercantile there. They have soapboxes for sale. Um, I know that there's some of you that have some opinions about the mask and, you know, all this stuff. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the stupidity that I see, but I want to challenge you. Tomorrow, excuse me, Monday, the 20th, uh, a lot of the businesses have decided that they're going to require masks, okay? Now, you have a choice to make. You can be a bullhead, and you can really show the love of Christ by being angry with the employees, right? It got awful quiet in the mortuary. Or you can just put the darn mask on, wear it, and when you get out, take it off. Listen, listen, you're not going to be signing up for a vaccine. You're not going to be signing up for a chip. You're not going to be signing up to, you know, this is not communism or fascism or Nazism. Some of you need to read some history books. But anyway, I, my office is full of them, by the way. But listen, th this has become a ridiculous I'm so grateful that they didn't mandate it in our city and they didn't mandate it in our county. They actually voted that down, but they did require the businesses. And, of course, some of the national chains now have decided. If you don't want to wear a mask, period, my advice to you is go to Winn-Dixie. Okay? So you just go down there and, and go to Winn-Dixie. And I'll still be at Publix because I love Publix and I love the Jenkins family and you know, I just, anyway, I have some personal opinions about Winn-Dixie. But anyway, you just go down there and give them your dollars, and that'll be fine. But it, it, is, it does not show Christ. It does not show Christ. Because remember, you are, you are an ambassador of Christ. I want you to look around this room. There's ambassadors in this room. You say, I'm not a preacher. Christopher, you're an ambassador of Christ. Did you know that? Did you know that Michelle is an ambassador of Christ? And she's also the first lady of the church. People know her. She hates that term, by the way. Deborah, you're an ambassador of Christ. Dan, you're an ambassador of Christ. Every person in this room is an ambassador of Christ. And so we, we represent Christ. Now you say, I got opinions. Great. Keep your opinions to yourself. Okay? This is dividing us. This is causing us to fight. This is causing us to be angry. Listen, I got people who have left the church because we don't, we're not people of faith. That's what they've said. Yeah. Well, because I got the signs out there and we have the chairs parted and, you know, we have the hand sanitizer and we want everybody safe. And so that they say that's no faith. What's funny about that is until you get the virus. Oh, I better get off my soapbox and get out of the deep weeds. And get to the word tonight. It's amazing to me how things change. And so I had a nasty comment by somebody on Facebook. And, and um, uh, my wife wants me to get off there. and I can't. But anyway, um, they, I posted something about um, what's missing. You are uh, talking about the church. The letters you are. And I had an article from Charisma on there. And somebody from the church posted something nasty. And, you know, something like this. The church should have never closed. And then 
this week they decided that they weren't ever coming back to church until this thing's over because they want to see their grandkids. So it's funny how things change when, you know, circumstances in our lives change, you know. And so uh, be careful when you say something because egg sometimes gets back on your face. Amen. Amen. Hey, by the way, I've never pastored in a pandemic before, so I don't know what the rules are. Since all of y'all are experts, please write down so that I can have the, the information so I can write a book about pandemics. And I'll move on. Breakthrough living in times like these. I don't know about you, but I need a breakthrough. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. This is where our, our scripture, we've had our power verse. And tonight's the last night you'll hear it. You say, I'm glad he's off of this. I just hope you remember it. Because this is where we are. We're in a spiritual warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what are they? Mighty in who? In God for the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds believing wrong information. Casting down arguments. There you go. Mask or an argument. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity. To what? To the obedience of of Christ. We are in a spiritual battle. We are on spiritual battle, uh, excuse me, spiritual warfare part four. This is our final part in this. And Pastor Sue will fill in the gaps for the next seven weeks on um, Wednesday night. Her uh, actually her last class is eight week eight, but she's already had one uh, will be a question and answer and also just a review. So you get the information. Let's turn to Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And let's see the text here of where Paul writes to the church at Ephesus and challenges us to realize the battle that we're facing. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, most important verse. If you haven't heard that already, let me give it to you. For we do not wrestle against what? Okay, so your fight is not against anybody else. Your fight is not against the Democrats if you're a Republican. And if you're a Republican you're, uh, or a Democrat, your fight is not against the Republicans. It's not vice versa. If you're a Libertarian, if you're, if you're pink polka dotted, I don't care. Your fight is not against your brother or sister in Christ that might have a difference of opinion of you. I mean, if we can't get this, the enemy has already won. Because, see, we're trying to fight each other and we can't fight each other. Our battle is not against each other. Our battle is against principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. How many know we're in the evil day? And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So my question to you tonight is, are you dressed for battle? Are you prepared for the battle that we're in? And we are in a battle. We are in spiritual warfare, and you need to be dressed appropriately. I'll give you the six pieces that we've talked about over the course of the last several weeks. Of course, in and spurtingly because I've been... Uh, gone and we've had other things happen in between but here's the six pieces and you'll notice that there's you know six is a weird number because six is the number of man and that's a problem because God always does things in completion but I'll show you where the seventh piece is tonight the belt of truth of course central to holding everything in our lives together especially in this battle that we're in we must be centered in truth 
And of course, everything in our lives has to be centered around what God's word says because God's word is truth. If you know the truth, what happens? The truth will set you free. The bless, breastplate of righteousness, it covers our heart. It protects us. It's not our righteousness. It's Christ's righteousness in us. We have the gospel shoes of peace. Of course, taking the good news always is bringing peace. But literally, we need to be the agents of peace in this world. We need to be the ones that go into the circumstances and the situations. And we literally, just by the presence that we carry, not ours, but by what we sang about tonight, the atmosphere, the literal atmosphere of heaven should just come into a situation, maybe at the grocery store, or maybe at, the, at our work, or maybe in our neighborhood, that just peace comes because we're there. My goal this Wednesday when I pray for city council here in Sebastian, how many know they need prayer? I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to start with scripture. I'm going to actually quote uh, from the psalmist about, Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. It's like the oil running down. Remember, it's the anointing. And so I'm going to quote that scripture and then pray for those rascals down there. Somebody knows that they need Jesus. Come on, somebody. I'm praying that peace comes into that room, not because of me, just because of the Holy Spirit. The shield of faith, literally, we can quench the fiery darts of the enemy, the darts of fear and doubt and unbelief with the shield of faith. The helmet of salvation, literally our thoughts, this is where the battle is. This is where the battle is right now with all the stuff that we're dealing with. People's minds are absolutely, because they're so controlled by the information overload. There are so many experts. Hello? It's true, isn't it? Just because you read it on Facebook, don't make it the gospel. Just because you read it on Facebook, doesn't mean that you should write your doctoral thesis on it. You might find out that it was all lies. So be careful. I'm not saying that some of this doesn't have threads of truth in it, but sometimes it gets to the point to where it just becomes such fantasy land that maybe we need to be careful what we're reading. As a matter of fact, I'd say let's just read the good book so that we know what it says and forget all this other stuff. Keep our mind absolutely pure from all those thoughts. Trust me, I, I'm speaking to myself because I'm just as guilty. And so we just need to guard our thoughts. Our, our thoughts should be saved, sanctified, set free by the power of God. And of course, there's nothing more powerful than the sword of the Spirit, which is the what? The Word of God. It is a two-edged sword. It is strong and powerful. Now, if you see the picture on the screen of our Roman legionnaire, and if you see any picture of any Roman legionnaire, usually a foot soldier... Uh, one in the infantry, one in the army, if you will, would always be with these seven pieces. And you'll notice I said seven, even though we only have a list of six. What would be the seventh piece? Well, it has to be with that spear or that lance that he has in his hand. And there was no Roman legionnaire that went into battle without that piece. As a matter of fact, here's something interesting. As I was reading this week and as I was studying this this week, and I wonder if Pastor Sue has talked about this. I hope she's not watching because she'll steal it from me. But um, literally, I found out something. When they would go into battle, the first piece that they would use would be what? The lance. Because think about it. They can't do battle without they get that spear out of their hands. Now, let me show you something here in just a minute. Let's go back to the scripture, Ephesians 6, 18. Paul doesn't call the lance the lance of prayer. Okay, You can't find that in any uh, biblical uh, theological book. You, if you ask some big uh, theologian with doctors and master's degrees, they'd say that I was crazy. But a lot of your, your believers in Christ, one of them, Dr. Rick Renner, who is a, a student of Greek. He has wrote some great books in Greek called Gems in the Greek. I highly recommend them. They're devotionals to help you learn uh, Greek because it helps you to understand some of the things in our in our New Testament. Uh, he believes that this is the seventh piece because, like I believe, he believes that six is the number of man. Why is that? Because man was created on the sixth day, and so seven is the number of completion. Why is that? Because when God came to the seventh day, what did He do? He rested because everything was complete. And then eight would be the number of new beginnings because it's a new day. It's a new beginning. 
And so the, the kicker is, is that Dr. Renner uh, said actually that he believes that this is, this is probably the first. It's an interesting, always the Bible does things in weird order because, you know, the last shall be first. The very piece that we should be using first is the piece that Paul talks about last. Now, you got to understand something. Nine chances out of ten, Paul had never seen a Roman legionnaire in battle. And so that may be why he comes up with the, and doesn't even mention it, because he might see the lance if the, if the legionnaire even had it with him, because they would have only had it when they come into battle. Look at this picture that I found on the internet. It's a great picture uh, about the lance of prayer here. And so we have four legionnaires running into battle. And if you'll notice, the first thing that they are uh, got in their hand besides their shield and all the other pieces are there is that lance in their hand ready to throw it. What are they going to throw it at? They're going to throw it at the enemy, aren't they? They're going to pinpoint who they're going to throw it at. Now for us in our modern technology of warfare, this doesn't make any sense, but... This was the latest and the greatest in the, the biblical times. This was, I mean, Roman army was tough. I mean, they were, they, they were literally taking over, conquering the entire world at the time. I mean, they were the superpower. They were the United States of the time. They literally had uh, the upper hand in conquering the enemy. Why the lance of prayer? Because literally we need to learn how to pinpoint our prayers. We need to target our prayers. How many of you have got something in your life that literally you need to target? You need to point that lance at and you need to literally say, I am going to take authority over that in this area. Maybe it's healing. Maybe it's uh, financial. Maybe it's relational. Maybe it's something going on uh, in your work. Maybe it's what you feel about what's going on here at the church. I don't know. But that's exactly what we need to do. We need to target our prayers. Because literally when you begin to target your prayers, you put the enemy on notice that you see exactly what he's doing. Next week when I talk about pause, and I'll talk for the next four or five weeks about pause, we're going to take a break. We're going to literally put the, the, the play button off and put it on pause and look at things so that we can see clearly what the enemy is doing because the enemy is actively working. He is actively working to divide and conquer not only in our nation, not only in our community, but I mean, we've seen it in our city council, what's going on there, but also in the church and in the spiritual community. Because if he can turn the apple cart over and get the focus off, if we're not paying attention, if we're not paying attention to his tricks, because it's all smoke and mirrors anyway, he doesn't have any real authority. His authority has already been taken away. So he has to kind of work in lies and, and he has to work in deception and deceit. And, and he tries to get us to focus on the stupid and the, and the mundane. And, and we forget about how precious life is. We, get, we forget about how valuable uh, people are. We forget about other people's opinions and feelings. And we forget about what we're supposed to do as ambassadors of Christ. We need to begin to target our prayers to say, All right, devil, I see what you're doing. I see what you're trying to, to do here. I, 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 when we had our pastor's prayer group here this past Thursday, there was probably about 16 pastors here. And we had a, a couple people that wanted to bring a presentation, which is fine. We have that from time to time. And... They made their pres presentation, and then we began to pray. And it was amazing to hear the prayers of uh, Pastor David Ruhlman from The Gate and Pastor Mike Lyle from Crossroads and uh, Linda Howard from The Special Gathering and, and the various pastors who had gathered others. that my, Their names don't come to me right now, but uh, they will as I'm going along. But they just began to pray, and we're all praying about the same thing. We're all seeing the same thing. We're all feeling the same thing. Why is that? Because the enemy is trying to to destroy. The enemy does what? Kill, steal, and destroy. If you haven't paid attention, he's doing a good job trying to destroy the work of God. Is he going to be successful? No, he's not. No, he's not. He absolutely is not because we're going to target our prayers. Let me ask you a question. How often should we pray? Always. That's what the first part of the verse that we read says. Paul tells them you should be praying always. I think that's interesting that when I was reading this, that they said that they always started when they were running, of course, into battle. They were starting with the lance. We should pray first, not last. 
Remember I told you about that paperweight I gave Pastor Tom with the dumbest saying on it? And I didn't think anything about it because it was probably cheap and I wanted to give him something. And it said, when all else fails, pray. Too many people, that's exactly what they do. They wait till everything's just destroyed. They wait till all kinds of, you know, havoc has been run in their families and in their situations. Listen, we need to pray first. We need to pray first and we need to pray often. And we need to just call out. Why? Because we have access. Do you realize you have access to the very throne of grace? You know, not only do we need to pray always, but Paul told us in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, he said, we need to pray without what? Ceasing. Some of us give up too quick. Some of us, you know, we pray. Listen, what would have happened if 33 years ago, when this church was getting ready to be established, if those precious little people that would meet at the home of Gene and Helen Ryan with Fanny Catlett and the Cobbs and the Andersons and uh, Lorraine uh, Edmiston and um, uh, Wanell Fisher and, and Richard, her husband, and so many others that I could name right now, if over on Palm Avenue, real close to Michelle and I's house, I mean, it's probably two or three blocks uh, from our house, what if they would have stopped praying about a church in Sebastian? And they said, well, you know, we're older, They're, the community's small. Was the community small 33 years ago? Yes. <laughs> Trust me, when I got here, it was small. It was tiny. Carol, do you remember? It was tiny. And, and I mean, it wasn't a lot here and you know, there was a few churches, but very few, and they were small. And, and what if they would have given up hope? That group, they not only had good Bible teaching, because Fanny was an excellent Bible teacher coming from Ramah. And uh, just, I mean, the, the spirit moved in those meetings. And, of course, they were very uh, gracious to drive back and forth to Central Assembly all the way in Bureau, because that's where they fellowship. They were a part of that. Uh, their fellowship group was a part of that church. But they just prayed. They believed that God wanted... A, a church here in Sebastian, spirit-filled, blood-washed, you know, uh, here in Sebastian. And they kept praying. And, of course, 33 years later, 16 of them would gather in the Sebastian Center and hold hands and pray and establish that church, Pastor Tom being the pastor. And here we are on this river 33 years later. Come on, somebody. Isn't God good? Because they didn't give up praying. Has it been easy? No. Are you awake? Okay, just making sure. <laughs> it's like I'm talking and nobody's listening. Amen. All right. It's like being at home. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't you even say a word, woman. Amen. All right. She tells me, just grunt so I know that you're there. All right. What does Paul mean when he says praying with all prayer? If you read it in the NIV, it says praying with all kinds of prayer. If you read it in the uh, NLT, it says the same thing. There, there are different kinds of prayer. Did you realize there are different kinds of prayer? There are different kinds of prayer for different situations. I found that there's actually about seven kinds of prayer, because here again, it's, it's the completion, all right? First off is the prayer of consecrating. You're consecrating something. Tonight, we're going to look at two of these. I've highlighted them. That One of them is the one we're going to talk about now, the prayer of petition, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Then, how many of you have ever heard of the prayer of faith? All right? I mean, anytime you pray, you should be praying in faith. But there's actually a prayer of faith that you can literally call down heaven because you know, and you just know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the word of God is true. His promises are yes and amen because faith comes by what? And hearing by what? Word of God. What about the prayer of thanksgiving? Do you know that when you pray, you can give thanks to God? I get up every day and say, thank you, God, that I don't have the Rona. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I mean, you know, we need to thank God for his goodness. We need to thank God for his blessings. We need to thank God for what, whatever the day brings. How about the prayer of supplication? The prayer of Sarah, supplication is when we literally get on our knees and we begin to ask God to hear the cry of our heart in humility, in, in honor, in love, in the fear of God. Now, that's not to be afraid of Him, but that's to awe and respect and wonder. That's the prayer of supplication. Tonight, we'll also talk about the prayer of intercession and, of course, the prayer 
of authority. You ever heard somebody pray and they have no authority? You know what that is? They don't know the book. They don't know the writer of the book. They've never experienced life with the one who this is all about. Jesus said, I am the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. See, you know, that's why you hear prayers all the time. You'll hear, you're here on Congress and you'll hear different people pray. And, and you'll hear the prayers and you go, hmm, that was nice, but there's no authority. See, that's the difference, see. Satan is afraid of the people who know their authority in who they are and whose they are in Christ. Because when you know your authority, you're not going to give him any slack. You're not going to give him any ability. Right now, he is frustrated with what I'm going to give to you next week. Now, he doesn't know what I'm going to give you. He just heard me say that I'm going to talk about pause and talk about some of these things that we're dealing with because I want to expose the lie. I want us to get our face off of Facebook and get our face into the book so that we know exactly what we're talking about so that we can be the agents of change to a world that is desperately lost and dark out there and needs the hope that you and I have that's only found in Christ and Christ alone. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. He doesn't realize we have the authority and we're going to take that authority. Who's going to take their authority? Amen. 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 So we need to learn how to pray the prayer of petition. The prayer of petition. Let's look at it here in James chapter 5. Verse 16 through 18. Look at this real quick. This is very interesting because in, in the book of James, this is Jesus' half-brother, by the way. Jesus' half-brother is telling us how to pray the prayer of intercession. If you look up the, the word here, it's actually the word that we would translate intercession. The effective fervent. What does that word fervent mean? Sincere. I mean, with, with passion, right? With desire, I mean, we're expecting, all right? Here, here's, here's one of the problems that we have when we pray. It's just like what we have in church. When we come to church, how many of you love it when you feel goosebumps at church? Okay. How many of you love it when you sense the power of the Holy Spirit in the room? Can I tell you something? You can have that every week. You know where the problem is? Us. It's the pastor's fault. It's because Moses was sick. It's because the piano player didn't play right. Nope, it can have bad music and still have the presence of God. Why? Because you came what? Expecting. You came expecting. Listen, this is fervent prayer. When you pray and you know that God is going to hear the, the cries of your heart. Why? Because the fervent prayer of a what? Now, the enemy just lied to somebody in this room and said, well, see, that's not you. That's not you, Dave. You're not righteous. Well, let me just tell you something. Dave is righteous. How do I know that? Because he is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It doesn't have to do with Dave. Somebody say amen for that. <laughs> <Dave's> <laughs> he doesn't have to be Dave. No, he's Jesus. He has the nature of Jesus. He's taken on the righteousness of Jesus. Jesus paid for it so that Dave and Christopher and me and every person in this room has the righteousness. So when we pray, we don't pray with our fervency and our righteousness. We pray with Christ. I mean, it's just like we're in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember? Remember the rock? Remember the trees? Beautiful place, isn't it? I mean, it's gorgeous. You got to go, guys. You got to go. 2022. I got some of these people that want to go back with me already. See, I've started something now. We're all going to be broke, but, you know, somebody pray that we win. So, I mean, literally, it is, it is life-changing. But anyway, you're in that garden, and you can just feel Jesus leaning over that rock, praying fervently. What was he praying? Take this cup from me. And people always say, oh, he's praying because he doesn't want to do it. No, he has not. That's not that's, he knows his mission. No, the one thing he doesn't want is to be out of the Father's presence for five seconds. If we only knew that, think about how powerful it is to be in his presence. You say, well, I have to be at church. Church needs to be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> Guess what? You are the church. You carry your temple with you. Now, granted, I get it when we're together and there's lots of people and we're all worshiping and we're all one heart, one mind. There's nothing like it. But you know what? You can have the same kind of moments. You ought to hear Michelle sing. At our house. And listen to 
all the different music. Now, you got to remember, I'm Southern Gospel. That's Jesus. I mean, that's heaven's music, is Southern Gospel. Y'all just going to have to get over it. I let you have this stuff, but you're getting, you're getting Vestal in heaven. She's probably already tuning up right now. But at our house, Tasha Cobb is one of them, and uh, Bethel, and Elevate, and uh, who's some of the others that we, I hear? Stephanie Gretchinger, her favorite worship leader, who half the time is never singing on the floor, worshiping because she's so caught up in the presence. Listen, she's her own worship facility. Wherever she's at, she's just worshiping. I'll see her sometimes. She's crying. Sometimes she's doing whatever she's doing and her hands raised, you know. She's a lot more Pentecostal at the house. I just thought I'd let you know that. But anyway, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. That's good news. He got depressed. I preached that one to you. Remember? He got so depressed, he thought he was the only one he hid in the cave. He had a nature just like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. What is that? That's the prayer petition. You're actually petitioning God for something, or someone, or about some problem or situation. You're asking God. Right now, we are praying a prayer petition over our grandson, Asher Gray, who we found out the other day at, her, at his um, ultrasound yesterday, uh, the other day, on what day was it? Thursday, that uh, they said in the notes on the sheet to this ultrasound tech, it said, uh, baby is a wild child. <laughs> Which, those of you that know the child's mother, she was a wild child. That baby just moves all over her womb and hides his face from the and won't let her the, the lady see the pic, you know, you know, hides his face and puts his hands up. And we have pictures of everything and scoots back and forth in that umbilical, in that uh, ambiotic fluid and all that stuff. And it's just crazy. We pray a prayer petition over him. We pray specifically for him that first off she'll have a good pregnancy. That, that his life will be uh, one that will produce fruit for the kingdom. We're praying a prayer petition. We're fervently praying. You say, well, Pastor Grant, you're a pastor. That's why he hears your prayers. Listen, friend, he hears my prayers just as much as he hears your prayers. I don't have a red phone in my office that goes directly to heaven. I wish I did. But you and I both can do the same thing. We can approach the throne of grace because of what Jesus Christ has done. And we can pray that prayer of petition. How do you pray the prayer of petition? So glad you asked. First thing you got to do is you got to come humbly. You know the problem with most Christians? They've got a very haughty spirit. God, you owe me. Do you know God doesn't owe you nothing? <laughs> Matter of fact, really, what you deserve is what? Death. <laughs> I mean, that's what you deserve. For the wages of sin is death. But for the grace and the mercy of God, you would deserve death. You would deserve the penalty of hell. But because of Jesus and his love for us and the Father's love for us, he provided a way of escape so that literally we have access. So that doesn't mean that we come into the throne of grace and just make our order like some kind of fast food order and Lord I need this today and I need this. No, we come humbly. Look at 2 Chronicles 7.14. This is a verse for the hour. This is a verse for the ages. Yes, this verse is a promise for Israel but it's also for our nation today. Who's praying this prayer over our nation? If you're not, you need to be praying it every day. If my people, who is the, who is the my people? In this case where they're writing to here, the context is Israel. But the subcontext is you and me. We're praying about the, our nation. We're praying for us. We, the church. We, the Christians. We, the ones that should know better. Instead of fist fighting with everybody over mask or not wearing a mask or, or they're going to chip me or they're going to do all this kind of stuff, which is all a distraction, by the way. It's all a distraction. The enemy is doing nothing but trying to get you to fight with your brother and sister in Christ because you're going to find somebody that doesn't agree with you. And the minute you find somebody that doesn't agree with you, all of a sudden that person becomes the enemy. And they may be a blood-bought child of the king, brother or sister in Christ. Why in the world would you do that? Your battle is not against flesh and blood. 
Are you hearing me tonight? If my people who are called by my name, whose name? His name, Jehovah. His name, Yahweh. His name, Yeshua. His name, Jesus, will do what? Have you ever noticed when people prayed in the old days, they would get on their what? They would get on their knees. And some, as the old hymns would write, they would literally lay what? Prostrate on the ground with their face to the ground. When you go to Israel and you stand at the wall, sometimes when the men come to pray or the women come to pray, you'll see some of them lay on those cold stones in front of that uh, western wall, that wailing wall. They'll lay there and they'll say, They'll just pray. They're crying out to God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Listen, you're not going to find it on Facebook. You're going to find it by seeking his face, keeping your face in the book and turn from their wicked ways. OK. Pastor Grant, I'm, I'm not wicked, really. How about your attitude? How about your thoughts? How about some of the words you say? If everybody would hold this scripture to their life before they posted the things they post on Facebook, the world would change tomorrow. Why? Because we don't want any wicked way in us. And then hear from heaven. We will forgive. He said, I'll forgive your sin and I'll do what? Heal the land. Who thinks our land needs healing? Desperately. That's where it starts. Where does it start? It starts in Washington, right? It starts in Washington, right? No. No. It starts in Tallahassee. That's where, it, you know, at, at Governor DeSantis's office. It starts there, right? Oh, wait, no, it starts down here on Main Street. Yeah, definitely. That's where, you know, locally, that's us, right? No, it starts at 11205 Roseland Road, and whatever your address happens to be, mine is 158 Del Mar. Because we are his people. We. I'll keep moving. Number two, how do you pray the prayer petition? You've got to ask in faith. It's amazing how many people, when they pray, they don't ask in faith. They don't believe. They don't even, they don't even have the faith to muster. How are you going to get the faith to be able to pray in faith, the prayer petition? Well, you have to know what you're praying. Sometimes I believe what we need to do is we need to start doing what we should do, which is pray the word. There's a lot of prayers in the Bible that will help build faith in your life so that you can learn how to pray and ask in faith. Matthew 7, 7, I love this. It says, Jesus, red letters here. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. Why is he saying this? Because when you pray, this is the way you need to pray. You need to come with boldness. You need to come absolutely with humility, but you need to ask in faith, believing that you're going to receive, and that's number three. The third thing is, if you're going to pray the prayer of petition, you've got to believe you will receive, that God will hear your cry, that God will answer that he does not look at you any different than he looks at me or anybody who you think is absolutely super spiritual. He doesn't look at you different than he looks at Andrew Womack or Joseph Prince or uh, um, uh, Joyce Meyer or, or whoever your favorite preacher happens to be. No, you need to realize that he looks at you the same. Not denying the anointing and the, and the gifts that are in their life. But God does not have any respecter of persons. It's not going to be the special people in us. No, we're all going to stand before God, give an account. And he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant, based on how we live our life. Friends, we need to learn to believe that we will receive what we pray for. In Mark 9, 23, it says this. It says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe. If you can what? Believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Those 16 people that met in that little room there in uh, the Sebastian Center, there was no carpet on the floor, there was no walls up, it was just an open, bare, 
empty space, stud walls around them. The Sternads had just built that building a few years before that, and there was no, there was, I think there was two small offices rented in that gigantic upper floor. We would eventually take over almost uh, a quarter of that facility um, in rent uh, on the top floor. But when they stood in a circle in that particular space, that was the only space they could find. All the schools had churches in them. Pastor Ronnie had Sebastian Elementary. And some of the schools that we have today didn't even exist back then. Liberty and, and Treasure Coast. And, you know, even the high school wasn't there then, believe it or not. And so they looked for space all over, and they saw this space above the furniture store there uh, next to Wendy's on US-1, and they stood. I, I, I'd love to have Fanny Catlett alive to ask her, what did you see? What could you see prophetically in the Spirit? I truly believe she saw us right here. I truly believe she saw what God would do on the river. I truly believe that she saw all the lives that were changed and all those little prayer warriors who were with her because she had taught them how to pray. Because why? They believed all things were possible. They believed all things were possible to them that believed. So simply believe. Hey, let me ask you a question. How did you get your salvation? You believed. You believed that Jesus died for you. So you received him by grace through faith. That's exactly how you get your prayers answered in the prayer petition. You just simply believe. Somebody say amen. amen. This is the last prayer that I want to talk to you about is praying the prayer of intercession. And if there's ever a day or an age that we need more church uh, folks praying in intercession, it's today. Now, there is a ministry, I believe, of intercession. But I believe every believer can pray a prayer of intercession. Because literally, we have... Uh, Jesus sitting at the right hand making intercession for us. And I'll give you a verse about somebody else that's also praying for intercession for us. Look at Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 5. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 5. Jesus speaking again. Then he spoke, to, uh, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not what? Don't lose heart. In other words, just because you don't see the answer right away, don't give up. Just because it's not happening the way you think it's, you've got to keep pressing in. You've got to keep believing. You've got to keep uh, literally listening. Now, look at what Jesus says. He gives this parable, always talking about prayer here, talking about the prayer of interceding. He's giving you the formula for intercession here. He says, saying there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now, there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, look at this, because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Now, let me ask you a question. Was Jesus saying that we have to weary God? No. But what he was saying was literally all we have to do is intercede. All we have to do is press in. All we have to do is just literally come to the Father and say, Father, I've got this situation going on. Maybe it's about a child. Maybe it's about your marriage. Maybe it's about your job. Maybe it's about the finances. Maybe it's about what's going on. I don't know what he's called you to intercede for. I pray that you're going to intercede for our nation. We've got the most important 100 days coming up. We'll talk about that when I get to the end. How do you pray the prayer of intercession? Glad you asked. Here's three things. The first thing that you've got to do is you've got to learn how, like the little widow in the story that Jesus told, you've got to keep praying. You've got to keep praying. Too many people just give up. Too many people quit. Too many people get tired. How many of you are here in this service tonight and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life because you had somebody pray? Maybe your grandmother, maybe your mother, maybe your father, maybe your grandfather. Let me see your hand. Christopher, I knew that about you. My grandmother prayed. Michelle remembers my grandmother, right? She had an eighth grade education. Her Bible's in my office. Many of you have seen it. I've showed it to you. It's the messiest looking Bible you've ever seen because it was well used. The kind of Bible it was, was a living Bible. Not the New Living Bible. It wasn't the translation of the New Living Bible. No, it was the paraphrase because she's that old. That Because her eighth grade education, a uh, King James Version just didn't work for her. Okay, now you can say she's, you know, a sinner, but 
Jesus didn't speak thee, thou, and thou either. Okay? So she would literally write in the, that Bible. And one day I was thumbing through it after... Um, actually, I wasn't supposed to get it, but it was left at the church where we had the service, the church that was born in her home. And, um, you know, it just happened to come home with me, her favorite grandchild. And I think my mother finally told my uncle that I have it. I, if he wants to get it, he can come from Orlando and get it. But it's mine. Just saying, it's mine. All right. So, <laughs> lock and key. Uh, uh, elders, <laughs> check the door. So, in there, she had lists of people that she prayed for. And she had dates by it. And I started looking at the dates. And I realized that she was praying for them to come to know Christ as their Savior. And what she did was she put the date when she found out that they had received Jesus as their Savior. See, that's the prayer of intercession. And that's keep praying even when you don't see something. You know, the problem is when we don't see what we want to see, Beth, we give up real quick. Because our eyes get on the flesh, doesn't it? Because we want to kill that flesh. We want to wring that, ne that neck of that flesh, don't we? But it's not the flesh, is it? It's the enemy. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, which was what we read earlier. He says, look at this, he's actually talking about intercession when he's talking to the church at Ephesus here. He says, I keep asking, that he's talking about prayer, that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. That's his prayer. That's his prayer of intercession over the church at Ephesus. You've got to understand about the church of Ephesus. They were very much like the church in the United States of America. They were in a very pagan situation. They were at a crossroads that they were very economically prosperous because of that crossroads. Shipping came through there and industry was there. And, and because of that, there was a lot of temple worship and idols and, and a lot of issues with, you know, uh, hedonism and, and, and flesh. And so he had to literally pray. He kept asking God that he would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they would know Christ, that they would know the Father, they would know the power of the Spirit so that their lives would be changed. He was interceding for the church at Ephesus. That's what you need to do. You need to keep asking God. Keep asking for that child's salvation. Keep asking for that marriage to be restored. Keep asking for the finances or whatever it is. Keep believing that you're going to receive it. Number two, how do you pray the prayer of intercession? Oh, this is big. You need to learn how to pray in the Spirit. <clears throat> the church of Jesus Christ in 2020, and especially the church that should know about Pentecost and the power of the Spirit, we need to not be ashamed of the Holy Spirit. We need to not be ashamed of the gifts. We need to not be ashamed of who we are and, and the destiny that we bear. And that doesn't mean that, that we're the only ones that can have this. No, everybody can have this. I, I read an article the other day that one of the, the greatest theologians of our time that is either linked to the Baptist or, or to the Presbyterians, I can't remember, uh, Dr. Norm T. Wright, he gave an article the other day in one of the ma uh, Christian magazines, the leadership magazines, about the power of praying in other tongues. And I almost fell off the floor, off the chair, onto the floor. I'm like, Norm T. Wright, so I'm reading the article. I sent it to my friend Billy Burns because I said, uh, do you see what I'm reading? And he says, yeah. He talked about the power of praying in the Spirit. He wasn't ashamed of it. He says, now I got friends that think I'm nuts. He says, so be it. I'm receiving power. Well, that's what the Bible says you'll receive. Building yourselves up, praying how? In the Holy Ghost, Jude verse 20 says. Look at what Romans 8 verse 26 through 27 says, talking about the Spirit and how He helps us to pray. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. You ever been there? You ever didn't have the words to say? Listen, that's when you need to pray in the Spirit. Let the Spirit pray through you. Here's what it says. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. Notice Jesus is sitting at the right hand making intercession for us. But also who else is making intercession for us here? The Spirit. 
for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he searches the hearts and knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according what? He doesn't pray his own will. He doesn't pray the will of what you want. He doesn't pray the will of the world. No, he prays only what the will of God is in intercession for you and I. That's exactly how we need to pray. You say, well, Pastor Grant, how do I do that? Just ask. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Come in. Fill me to overflowing. And just watch as the Holy Spirit. That's, a, that's exactly what Norm, Dr. Norm T. Wright, look it up, said. He said he just asked for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the next thing you know, he's speaking in other tongues. And the Holy Spirit began to just empower his life with boldness and, and understanding. Things that he had studied and he had wrote about. He said, some of the stuff I wrote about, I need to go ahead and take it off the shelf because I got a greater understanding. Why? Just like Paul, he kept praying for wisdom, knowledge, and revelation. We need to learn to pray in the Spirit. And the last thing, how do you pray the prayer of intercession? This is big. If you want your prayers, I don't care if it's the prayer of authority, the prayer of faith, the prayer of supplication, the prayer of consecration, I don't care what prayer it is. If you want one thing to hinder your prayers... It's unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. You're holding on to something. You see somebody. Listen, you know, like I told you earlier, those, those people, I, I, can't, I can't hold people here. If, if they're offended by our signs, if they're offended because we care about people, do you realize our church has 60% of people that are over the age of 65? As a pastor, do you think that I should be cared care about their well-being and their health you better believe it because I don't want them to suffer with this virus because of some asymptomatic person that comes and doesn't even realize that they have something and all of a sudden they give it to somebody that has some kind of lung issue and so if we we can wash if we can learn to wash our hands listen I taught daycare I was the after school guy at the daycare are you kidding I had to teach them how to wash hands here I am back in daycare Wash your hands, for goodness sakes. For 20 seconds, sing the song, happy birthday to me. And see, If you can't wash your hands, go out and get the hand sanitizer. How many of your hands are turning white because of the hand sanitizer? How many of you have actually put your hand sanitizer hands in your eye and felt the sting and pain? I have contact, so I understand your pain. Or usually what I do, because I'm a constant, you're not supposed to touch your face right now. Michelle's always yelling at me about that. But I put my fingers in my mouth and I go. <laughs> Listen, we need to learn how to walk in forgiveness. Mark chapter 11, verse 25, and I'm done. And then we'll take communion. And whatever you stand praying. So, here's Jesus, he's talking. He's saying whenever you're praying, you start praying and all of a sudden Holy Spirit brings something to your remembrance. A person, a circumstance, a situation, an attitude, maybe the way that you wrote. Some of you need an inspector general on what you write. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. That sounds easy, doesn't it? But that's probably the hardest lesson for Christians to understand. All of a sudden, you're praying, and that mind, that thought, that person, that situation, that's when you need to take care of it. First, you need to ask God to forgive you, and then you need to call that person. You need to go take care of if they're in that, if they're in church. If it's me, hello. <laughs> One time, Pastor Tom said at a communion uh, meal, I think in the other building over there, he said, "You know, tonight we're gonna. I think it was on a Sunday night. He said, if you've got unforgiveness in your life, and and your unforgiveness is is towards me, I want you to come and take communion with me." There was a line that literally was lined up. Now, you got to understand, he had a very tender heart, and he was weeping already. But uh, that night, he, because so many people had been offended by some of the things that he had said, not realizing that it wasn't him, it was the Holy Spirit that was saying it to them, and their toes were getting stepped on because the Holy Spirit was speaking to their heart. Hello? Got to learn to walk in forgiveness. 
If you're going to pray the prayer of intercession, you've got to learn how to walk in that forgiveness. I want to challenge you tonight. On um, next Monday, a week from this Monday, it is July 27th. That is a day in my life that will live in infamy. No, just kidding. That's D-Day. That's, um, excuse me, no, that's um, Pearl Harbor. July 27th is the day that me and Michelle got married. And this year will be 29 years, okay? But on July 27th through November 3rd, what's November 3rd? That's election day. That's 100 days from Monday the 27th of July all the way to November 3rd. We are in a desperate situation for prayer in this nation. Not just about the election, although that's very important, but also about what's going on in our nation right now. Do you realize our nation is being torn apart? Do you think the enemy is at hand? Absolutely. Between race and and, and all those issues, and then also between all this stuff with the, with the pandemic, and then, you know, just everything. It's just, it seems like something new comes up every day, something new fussing and fighting. We need to pray. We need to intercede. So I'm going to give you prayer points for the next hundred days. I'm going to post them on our Facebook page and our, on our app. That next weekend, I'm going to actually give you the first seven prayers that were seven days of prayer, morning, noon, and night. You don't have to do everything, but you, I would just like to know next week, not this week, but next week, if you're willing to consecrate your, your heart to pray for the next hundred days for our community, for our church, for our families, because our community is being torn apart right now by all kinds of things, for our nation, for our world, for the situations that are going on. Because how many know that we need to sit that lance of prayer, we need to focus it. We need to say, devil, we're not letting you have this right now. Because Jesus promised, he said, what, what are you supposed to pray? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Would you say that we're seeing what's going on in heaven right now? No. <laughs> Hello. So that means, church, we need to pray. We need to pray. Is there power in prayer? Yes. Absolutely. Dave? Amen. Absolutely. Go ahead. Amen. As I was reading this book on um, a friendship between Winston Churchill and, and FDR called um, Franklin and Winston by John Meacham. It's an old book. But um, there are atomic bombs of prayer right here just waiting to be exploded in the supernatural. Father, I pray for your church. I pray for every person in this room that, Lord, they'd see the value of who they are and whose they are in Christ. I pray that you've given me some ability to increase their faith tonight, to help them to realize that their prayers can be powerful, that their prayers can be effective, that their prayers can be fervent, that their prayers can be righteous, not because of them, but because of Jesus. God, whatever situation they need to deal with, whether it's forgiveness or whether it's just literally learning how to intercede and petition and all the others. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, be right there with them. Help them. Strengthen them. Give us a desire, Lord, to pray. I believe that the church of Jesus Christ has not used the, the lance of prayer enough to target the enemy where he's coming. 
Because like Dave said, we're so caught up with what's going on out there, we're not realizing who we are and the supernatural character of the life that we have in Christ and the power that we have in the Holy Spirit. I pray for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit in this room tonight on every life, that they'd walk out of here in boldness, that they'd walk out of here in might, not in their own strength, but in Holy Spirit's strength, so that they can face the challenges. And I pray, Lord, that in this hundred days, we'd see so many answers to prayer. We'd see so much breakthrough that we'd be absolutely amazed. And then we'd in turn do the prayer of thanksgiving and say, thank you, God, that you said you'd never leave us, that you said you'd never forsake us, and that you are a God who loves us and answers our prayer. Help us tonight, Lord. If there's someone in this house that does not know Christ as their Savior, has not come into relationship because you're not looking for religion, that's man trying to reach God. No, you're looking for relationship, that's God reaching down to man, offering salvation by grace through faith through Christ as they simply confess and believe, whether here or online, Lord, through Facebook, YouTube, and the other streaming platforms. I pray, Lord, that they'd simply confess and believe, repenting of their sin, turning to Jesus calling out to Him, calling on the name of the Lord so they can be saved according to what Romans 10, 13 tells us. And Father, I pray they'd let us know. I pray they'd say, hey, I prayed with Pastor Grant. Hey, I believe. I, I know that God came into my heart and forgave me of my sin. We want to help them get started on that journey. They'd let us know either on the stream or send us an email or text or here in the house. They'd come and talk to me or Pastor Matt or Pastor Moses or one of their team. Lord God, help us, Lord. In our weakness, you are so strong. In our inability, you are able. Now, Lord, as we come to the table tonight, would you help us to be ready and prepared to receive the atonements of your body and blood? In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd stand and find the little communion pack that our ushers gave you on the way in, I know with all the COVID stuff, you're not quite used to this, but remember it's the cellophane, the first little plastic that you pull off, and there'll be a little white wafer on the top. If you don't have one, just raise your hand and the ushers will bring you one. <clears throat> the scripture says, on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and then he broke it. I always like to fold mine in half. You don't have to, but if you'd like to, fold it over. And he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Isaiah 53 was prophetic about Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus is our healing. Peter would change exactly what that scripture says because it's fulfilled in what Christ took on the cross. The stripes, the piercings. In 1 Peter 2.24 it says, And by his stripes we were healed. I don't know about you, but I'm taking my healing tonight. Paul told us in 1 Corinthians 11 that many are sick and many have died because we don't discern the Lord's body. That's why we take the time to discern the Lord's body. So Father, tonight... We thank you for what Jesus took in his body so that we can take our healing. If there's anybody in this house that may be asymptomatic from this COVID, right now I pray that when they take Holy Communion, it kills it in Jesus' name. I pray those that are watching by Facebook that might have it, that literally by faith their healing comes as they partake in Holy Communion because that's the faith we believe. We just simply trust. And if they are sick that they're healed, Mind, body, soul, and spirit. That's what we want, Lord. We believe it by faith. Let's partake together. Now you peel that, that um, aluminum foil back, the second piece, carefully. So you don't spill it on yourself. This is not our normal, I understand that. Just bear with us. Don't get mad. Don't get upset. Don't get frustrated. It's the same principle. 
Jesus said, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Listen, if you want something real spiritual, you need to take communion with beet juice. It's the closest red thing we could find, right guys? Oh, it's awful. But hey, it worked. It was red. On the night he was betrayed after supper, very important, he took the cup. He blessed it. He said, thank, he said, thank you, Father, for, my, for, the, for the blood that was shed, for the forgiveness of sin in the new covenant, my blood, that, Father God, I ask right now that you would bless so that these would be free from sin. I'm not praying the right prayer, but you get the picture. See, the reality is Jesus shed his blood on the cross so that you and I could have our forgiveness of our sins. His blood, every drop, the precious blood. I like to say it this way when that sweet grape juice touches my lips. Oh, how sweet it is that my sins are forgiven and my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That cup that he would hold would be the cup of redemption. I don't think that's by chance. Why? He's our redeemer. He's our redeemer. So, Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And we remember Jesus, and we say, come quickly. Let's partake together. Now, just push that paper in there, and on your way out, there's going to be a garbage can in the center. Let me pray over you before you leave. <clears throat> so, Father, I just ask that as your church leaves with the taste of that wafer and the juice on their lips, that they remember the sacrifice and they remember, Lord, that it's up to us to pray and to pray in faith and to believe in intercession and petition for the needs that we have in our lives and the people. Lord, there's people out there that are lost and in darkness, and how are they ever going to know unless we tell them about Jesus? So, Lord, bless them as they go. Give them sweet sleep. And when they rise tomorrow, make them salt and light to a world that's lost and dying. In Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen, amen and amen. Be praying about whether you're going to be a part of the 100 days of prayer, July 27th. November 3rd. God bless you. Have a great day.